Now let's go to the big news out of the United Nations, where Australia voted for a successful resolution calling for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza and the release of all remaining hostages, which no doubt undermines Israel's position and plays into the favor of Hamas, which, let's not forget, is a prescribed terrorist group. As I've been saying for a while, we could have a ceasefire if Hamas just released the hostages and gave up their senior leadership. But no, they're winning the PR war and have countries, including Australia now, looking like doing their bidding. Uh, joining me to get the details on this and work it all through is the Australian newspaper's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan. Greg, thanks so much for coming on Credlin tonight. Tell me about this UN yes. resolution and what does it mean for Australia's international reputation and the conflict in Gaza? Because I have heard that not everybody is thrilled with, uh, with what Australia did here. Well, James, <clears throat> great to be with you. Look, it's a very disappointing decision by the Albanese government. We shouldn't underestimate how badly the Albanese government has been thrown off course by losing the voice referendum. They cannot hold a line on anything now. Uh, it's not only a bad position, it's an incoherent one because the resolution contradicts the statement that uh, Anthony Albanese issued with Justin Trudeau and, um, and the New Zealand Prime Minister. So the resolution calls for an immediate ceasefire and the release of all hostages. It doesn't mention Hamas by name, but an immediate ceasefire, uh, which wouldn't be accompanied by the release of all hostages anyway, would simply leave Hamas in power, uh, having committed the worst atrocity against the Jewish people since, uh, since Hitler's Holocaust. And uh, that would be a tremendous victory for Hamas. Now, in the, in the statement Albanese put out with Trudeau and Luxon, he said Hamas must lay down its arms, release all hostages, and have no part in the future governance of Gaza. Now, if Hamas did that, you wouldn't need to call for a ceasefire. Israel would stop military operations in a nanosecond. But the thing is, you can't have both. You can't pretend that you're in solidarity with Israel and then call for them to accept defeat. And just incidentally, we're opposed not only to the US, we're opposed to the UK, our AUKUS colleagues, and we're opposed to the majority populations of the South Pacific Forum, who either voted against or abstained. No, but we're on the same side as, I think, uh, lovely nations such as Russia. But the thing, Greg, that I'd love you to explain to me here is it seems to me that by switching positions here, Australia is helping to legitimize Hamas, which, of course, is a prescribed terror group. I think it's been prescribed since at least 2022 here in Australia. Um, does this, in, in that sense, does suddenly get, uh, Hamas wind up with a new sort of legitimacy and they get treated as a legitimate actor with legitimate grievances? Well, you're right, James. There's a very disturbing, ugly kind of moral equivalence which creeps into all the government's languages. So once, once again, even in the Albanese Trudeau Luxon statement, it says we stand against anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and anti-Arab feeling. So, you know, those poor old Arabs who only have a few dozen countries of their own <laughs> are being persecuted all over the world, apparently. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just kind of grotesque. And Hamas is not just a proscribed terrorist organisation. You're certainly right to draw attention to that. But, I mean, any human being who witnessed what happened on October 7 would know that that is equal to the most grotesque, vile, sadistic atrocities the world has ever seen. Now, in fairness to the Albanese government, let me be fair to them, they, without uh, question and without exception, they absolutely condemn Hamas and its actions. So in the explanatory statement at the UN, in Penny Wong's press conference and in Albanese's Prime Minister's statement, they explicitly and utterly condemn Hamas. But you can't... I mean, the two objectives, you must remove Hamas from Gaza and Israel must immediately stop all military actions, they're not compatible. So if you have both those objectives, you've got to at least be honest enough to tell us which one has priority and why, instead of which the Albanese government tries to speak out of both sides of its mouth at once in the hope that it can appease contradictory audiences. Well, and Greg, you mentioned those contradictory audiences and you mentioned how the Albanese government hasn't been able to hold the line on anything since The Voice. Julian Leeser today, uh, the Liberal MP, said that 
he thought that this was really about Albanese trying to appease voters in Graindler, his home seat, which has a very large Greens vote. Um, and other people have suggested that also it's about appeasing seats with a high Muslim population in Western City, Sydney, um, and also in suburban Melbourne. How much is domestic politics affecting this? I think this is all domestic politics. I think the Albanese government is proving to be a tremendous disappointment now. It's not doing anything at all on defence. I often rabbit on about that on on uh, on this program. Um, you know, simple electoral mathematics. There are nearly 900,000 Muslims in Australia, about 100,000 Jews. So uh, the Albanese government is in, in process of dis dismounting from its support of Israel and joining up to a more uh, appeasing Muslim opinion position. It's under assault from the Greens. Um, I think Albanese will always hold Grainler, but I think the Greens are threatening Labor in all kinds of inner city seats. And you can see the dishonest and terrible campaign the Greens will run at the next election. And by the way, I think Labor looks heroic compared to the Greens. But you can see the Greens claiming that Labor, Labor is militarist and, uh, you know, a patsy for the Americans and, uh, you know, is anti-Palestinian and all that. So uh, I think a very big part of this resolution is to try to appease the Arab voters in southwest Sydney and elsewhere and to... Um, safeguard themselves against the obvious attack lines from the Greens at the next election. I mean, the Albanese government has seen Joe Biden's numbers go down as he has supported Israel. So Biden, I'm happy, you know, I'm a very strong critic of Biden on a lot of fronts, but he has been very good on Israel and he's lost Arab voters and he's lost Gen Z as a result. Uh, that's the state that our poor culture is in at the moment. And the Albanese government is not going to go courageously in defense of friends when there are votes on the other side.